Science that's cool, paper so unique. Welcome back to Cool Ass Papers that I read this week. Where do these plastics come from? The short answer is everywhere. But the best science answer we've got is that wastewater treatment plants produce a lot of it. Wastewater treatment plants are the places that put your stinky poo and or bath water through a series of physical and chemical processes to make it less stinky and eventually good enough to use in your home again. Wastewater treatment plants will either form microplastics from their regular bigger plastics as they're going through the plant, or they might simply miss some of them that were formed earlier in the disposal process. For example, this review says that treatment plants can catch anywhere from 70 to 90 percent of particles. Only around 0.5 to 50 particles per liter avoid treatment plants and eventually get back into the water that will circulate back to our homes. The always accurate Google AI says that an average person creates about 200 liters of wastewater per day. And this source says that a single treatment plant can process three to 50 million gallons, aka up to 190 million liters of water per day. But look, I never learned how to do math. When I read these initial stats, I'm thinking how many particles are still in our water even after it's been treated? Even though there's only a small amount of particles per liter that's being missed by these treatment plants, if you consider how much waste we all provide and how many liters of water a single plant can process, it's clear that current membrane technologies used in wastewater treatment plants aren't good enough at catching all of the microparticles that need to stay out of our water. On one hand, it might seem like 50 microscopic particles in an entire large-ish bottle of Coke probably isn't a big deal, but are we sure that it's only 50 particles? That brings us to big problem number two, which is accurately counting how many microplastic particles are currently in our water. So putting all this together, here's their game plan. One, take a water sample that's filled with microplastics and put them through a filter or a membrane. Two, use their unique flow cytometry method to see how many microplastics get through this membrane. And three, compare and ideally improve on the current methods of both filtering and detecting microplastics from water.